Hello and welcome back to the Rove podcast. I'm Paris Norris and we are celebrating 50 years of the UAE and with that, the young Emiratis that have made a difference and continue to drive the country forward. And we've been talking with some very talented people from all fields, including the arts, captains of industry, some entrepreneurs. And today we have with us Reem Al Marzuki. Hi. And it's very interesting and a pleasure to have you here. Thank you. And uh, you've just come over from Abu Dhabi and you've only just realized that yeah. uh, we have traffic in Dubai. Yeah, it was shocking. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So you, you were uh, born and grown up in, in Alain, if I understand correctly. Yeah, I'm from Alain and uh, only the last uh, seven years of my life I just moved to Abu Dhabi. And yeah, now I'm using this. I am from Abu Dhabi. Why would you ever leave Alain? Alain is a very nice city, <laughs> but if you have uh, like big plans, you really need to push yourself out. <laughs> Go to the big city, yeah. Abu Dhabi. So, talk to me about your big plans. Like you, you're working as an engineer uh, for Abu Dhabi airports right now. Yes. Um, you come up with some incredible innovations uh, and inventions. But what was the starting point for you what when you were younger what did you dream to be was it always in this field and what were your inspirations um uh, first um i joined architecture engineering college 2008 thinking i'm gonna just be an architect i never thought i would be in an, an aviation field a uh, project inventions you never know what's waiting for you <laughs> but it just happened <laughs> so um, yeah and so uh, your invention, talk us through it. Um, explain to us what it is and um, how all that came around. Was it part of a, a, a project? Project, yeah. So uh, first of all, uh, when you apply for engineering college, uh, uh, the first year you study like a basic uh, engineering material. Mm -hmm. So one of them was the ethics of engineering. They just teach you how to be ethical in engineering field. And um, part of it was uh, when you... Uh, develop an idea how to keep uh, the intellectual property of the owner of the very first idea that you developed something out of it. Like, for example, LCDs are developed from basic TVs. So they still kept that intellectual property rights. Meanwhile, LCD has nothing to do, like when you compare them to the first TV, you will never believe that they are the same. But they serve the same purpose. So that's the thing we were learning. So part of the course uh, project is just developing something. And I, I truly thought we really need to invent something. It's not just something simple. Um, it happened that during that time I was um, inspired by a lady. She's an armless pilot. Her name is Jessica Cox. And uh, I was thinking, like, why not uh, designing a car for her? You know, <laughs> I just... I felt like I'm very thankful for her, and I just really, really did, wanted to do something. Um, uh, I simply emailed her, telling her, "Hi, my name is Reem. I'm from this university, la, 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 and I really want to do something for you. What do you want to? Do? What do you want to have? Is it a car?" <laughs> she said, "Yes, why not? A car designed for me that would be great." And then I applied for um, multiple designs, and I just went to the workshop with um, my friends. We were trying on some prototypes, and boom, we have an invention. So uh, the funny part is I wasn't an A student, and I was never an A student, just FYI. Uh, so I went back to my professor saying, I have an invention, and I really need to apply for a patent. And he was like, no, 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 you should really focus on your study. You don't do this now. You do this when you study a PhD or something. <laughs> I was like, listen, I already have it, and it's in the garage. You want to see it? So when he saw the prototype, I could convince him. That was like the um, weapon to convince people, like, hey, I have an invention. So, um, and that was basically the easiest uh, application have ever happened that year. And for some reason, it just, it was the bump. I don't know why. I am the owner of it, and I don't know why it was the bump of the year. But I'm lucky, and I'm happy, and I, I, I just took it, you know. <laughs> so, and then I, I was thinking, if, if it started that simple, 
uh, I just want to do this for this person. Why not starting to do more and more of these stuff? They sound fun and seems like people really like it and people are benefiting from it in an academic field or the industry field. So it was just a side hobby. Uh, step by step, it became like my thing. And now it's, became, it's becoming my core thing. I never planned to be an inventor. Well, I just, I was thrown there and I'm enjoying it. <laughs> so. And it seems like your thought process was really to help somebody very much in need and, and then tried your hardest to understand what would be useful to her and, and, and then figured out how to develop something. Do you think, I mean, is that the, the, do you think that thought process is the key to your success with that? It's the easy way. It's the easy way of inventing, thinking of the problem of this of the problem before the solution, because um, it happens so many times that people come up with the very advanced technologies and okay, what are we gonna do with it? But if you analyze the problem exactly and the need, the real need, and you design something around it, okay, then that's how really I'm doing it. I'm not a very uh, how do I say this. I don't spend long hours in libraries and experimenting in labs. People think inventors, they, they look like something, you know, they have a special way of living. But it's very simple. It's just thinking around the solution. So you think if you, if you fully understand the problem, the yes. solution is just a matter of time until you work it out. Yeah, and it, it's, it doesn't have to always be an invention. Sometimes it can be some, an idea. Mm. But people think it should be an invention to solve something. Maybe it's just a different process. That's a smart way also of doing it, right? Yeah. Well, I, it's interesting, isn't it? When we talk about innovation, <coughs> you know, innovation in business, innovation in design. Yeah. I think sometimes people think you've just got people in a room coming up with wacky ideas and, you know, and then, and you know, and then they, you know, coming up with all this creativity. But creativity can sometimes be a lot more simple than that yeah uh, and it doesn't really need uh, big meetings fancy rooms labs and can come on bed <laughs> yeah yeah no absolutely i think yeah. some of the best ideas come when you've got nothing yeah, to do right exactly, and you're just yeah, thinking you know yeah. i've had some of my best ideas just when no one was around and i'm and i'm bored and i have some time to think because we're always yeah. so busy usually yeah. um so talk me through like the, the process of getting a patent mm -hmm. and protecting ideas. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, that, that's something that's difficult because, as you just said, you can have a derivative of an idea. Mm. So, like you said, the, the LCD comes really from the TV, but it's a different invention. Yes. Um, but then also you've got the difficulty of protecting things internationally. Yeah. So how do you do that? Uh, okay, here comes the university part. Um, my university, they had a whole department only specialized in that thing with their own lawyers and their own team. You just apply there and they will do everything from A to Z, including the cost. I, I, I didn't do anything with that invention except just applying my, writing my thoughts and bringing them into word. But doing the process, traveling, going, lawyers and all, I didn't do it. It was all my university. And thank you, UEU, for that. <laughs> so, yeah, that's incredible. Yeah. Uh, I mean, it's a win-win uh, situation. They get uh, credibility and I also get it. You know? mm. It's a win-win situation. So, I mean, you've obviously had huge support from your university, but how... How do you feel the UAE has supported you in one way or another, either yeah. either actual support or just by the opportunities that it's presented you uh, in order to do what you do now and in order to succeed? See, uh, uh, I noticed uh, at, during my time, uh, it was not as e e as hard as, like, how do I say it? It was harder than now. It's getting more simple and simple to apply for patents because now, uh, uh, during my time, we only had two entities that could help us uh, in, in such thing. But now you really get confused which one to go with. 
there are almost endless options and every entity is trying to do innovations and supporting it, funding it and applying for it, helping you. So you're just there picking one of them and going with it. It's it's way easier than before. And I can see the movement, how it was and how it is now. So, um, of course, that's under the government's um, instructions and the leadership instructions. And some of them, they even got good budgets from the government to help inventions and innovations and stuff, especially with patents. They really got uh, um, direct funds from the Royal Highness Mm. on that. So So how does it work? Because once you've got a patent... Mm. That doesn't guarantee you any money unless you've either got someone who can license it or you've got some funding to actually back your patent and grow your business. Yeah. So so how does it then, how do you then commercialize it basically? The market, now here comes the, uh, there is a new entity coming in the, in the market now. They are specialized in marketing those patents because most of the patents, they ended up just being on papers or prototypes in showrooms. So they are now specialized in marketing them. And they are they they were successful to sell a lot of them. Mine's still not that um, of course if I, I could sell it I will be uh <laughs> maybe you will need to take an appointment with me. <laughs> 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 I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> so but you they were successful. Fantastic. Yeah, they, so this they have is a, a lot of successful stories. So this is a, a new entity? Yeah, the, a specialized, government yes, governmental one, specialized in just selling and marketing all the UAE national um, patents. Wow. Yeah. So I've seen some of my friends, they became millionaires. So watch out for my friends now. Right. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm glad we've met. You know, yeah. you're not just a podcast friend. Yeah. We are. We're buddies <laughs> now, right? When I see you become something big, yeah. remember this. Of right? course. <laughs> that oh. I'm helping you market uh-huh. it. Anybody out there okay. who needs... <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. So uh, <sighs> how do you see your future? Yeah. And, and you know, what, what would you say to, to people, you know, coming through the ranks who... who maybe want to follow a similar career to you? Okay. Uh, Those are two questions. Start with the first yeah, one, yeah, the future. Th- my future. Sh- okay. If, uh, I really thought um, at some point I really need to continue with my... Because, okay, I, I, I don't want to sound so, you know, look at me, look at me thing. But if you have a patent, that must be the something... It tells you that you have a creativity thing, you know? <laughs> It's something, for sure. It's something. It's yeah. something. Okay, I'm trying to be humble here, but I'm... <laughs> you I'm, don't have to be humble no, here. No, no, I'm no. interviewing you. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, once you detect that, don't always think, I have to only invent, do something new. Because I got stuck with that era for almost four years. I need to come up with something new. I need to come up with something special. And I couldn't do anything. I felt so bad. And I started looking... On my previous years, how I was productive, doing invention after one, one after one, and then for some reason it just stopped. So I started taking this talent in another way in the market. You can just take an old business idea and just shower it with your creativity. Upgrade that business idea. For example, um, we're doing now facility management company. We're not the first and we're not the last. But here comes the creativity part. I have to do something special. I have to do something different. And alhamdulillah, we're doing good using that talent. So this is what I'm trying to tell people. It it has nothing to do with uh, the first, the strongest, the best, the number one. It can be number seven, but it is the best number seven in the market. I started accepting not being number one. For, for some reason, I was I didn't want to be number two or three or four. I always thought this is not good for me. I should always be first, 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 first. But now I noticed you can just be something, how do I say it? You, you don't have to be a brand new thing. You can just do something old, but 
at its best shape, renovated. This is the word, renovate, innovate. You don't have to invent something from scratch. Just do something, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I, I set up a business in technology once, uh, yeah. and I had an Omani business partner, and um, he would always tell me not to think. He'd say, Paris, don't start, because I would think, right, how are we going to do this? Let me come up with some ideas. Yeah. And he'd say, you go to the competitors and you pick the best bits from all of them. Yes. And now what you've done is you've innovated something better than all of them. And and I used to think, but wait, this is copycatting. And, you know, uh-huh. co- when you come from university, you're told to do your own work yes. and not copy anyone else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's yeah. not the how the real world works. so different than Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if you look at, you know, I think it was actually the CEO of Samsung, if I remember correctly, it was something like this who basically said, you know, what we do is we we take the best bits from all the technologies yes. and we make it our own and then we're the best. And this is itself yeah. is an innovation. It is. People think innovation must be something uh, for cars are moving on wheels now, so I'm going to invent something different than wheels. No, invent the best wheel. You know, it's not reinventing the wheel. You're doing the best wheel. This itself is an inv- innovation and you don't have to underestimate it. Yeah, you and know? like you said earlier, it's probably more about understanding the problem first. Yes. Right, because yes. then the solution, it, it doesn't matter how you get to yeah. the solution. Yeah. It's, it's really understanding the, the, problem problem. That, the problem that you're yeah. solving. Um, that's fantastic. Now, do, do you find it's a male-dominated environment, your your space? Yes. And how do you... Do you, do you find that as, as a difficult thing to break through? Is there m- mental barriers there? Are there actual barriers there? Or do, do you find actually there's support for, for you to come through? See, it's a mix of everything. I, one person will support and the other person will feel a little bit threat. Like they feel, I don't know why they look at us as a threat. We are nice human beings. <laughs> we don't nice human beings yeah. we're just creating patterns we're that are gonna <laughs> slowly we're we gonna rule harm. the world <laughs> we don't bite <laughs> but uh, especially in the engineering field I will I can't say yes we get what we want but in order to get it we spent more effort than men so that's the thing and lately I was blessed with two boys so this is something, thank you. So this is something not counted in the field. Like I'm not just battling in the field with men. I'm also exhausted at home by men. <laughs> so and then I go back to work battling with men and go home struggling with men. And so it's just too much for a woman. But we can do it, right? No, it's definitely it's definitely a bigger job. It's happening. Yeah. It's happening. Yeah, but it's taking longer time and more effort than others. Because I, I, it's sometimes maybe difficult for men to understand because we yeah. we see everything through our eyes. Yeah, and um, you know, we we do, you know, we do have ears to hear that you know that that things are, are difficult, but but. Obviously, there is that element that if you want to be a mother, then there is obviously a trade-off with work, right? That, that, That's that. the thing. That's the thing. Of course, you, you have to compromise. You have to. But some women, like me, they just don't want to. So they go into this dilemma of um, which one should I sacrifice? Of course, it's not the kids. So is it going to be work? No. Is it going to be work? No. This is the only option, but I don't want to. <laughs> so um, and it's happening it's happening it's just taking longer time and more effort and I'm fine with it but when I co- when I compare myself to my male colleagues of course they went far ahead than me more way 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 more than me because they they didn't go through what I'm going through mm. you know I'm slower mm. but I'm spending more effort than them <laughs> So, yeah. Well, you seem to be doing pretty well. Yeah. I mean, uh, you know, yeah. you, you, you've done some amazing things. <laughs> I know I, I know. Uh, before the podcast, you said, no, but I want to be doing more. I want to be doing yeah. better. Uh, you always fact, feel like that. I think you have a similar mentality to me. Like people sometimes say, wow, well, you're doing fantastic. But they don't understand where I thought I'd be by now. Exactly. You know, I'm yeah. way behind what I had, yeah, I had, yeah, I had yeah, planned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And time is 
running. <laughs> yeah. I, I used to have plans before 30s, and now they're shifted to before 35. And I was yeah. like, inshallah, they will not be before 40. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it keeps getting shifted. Yeah, well, me too, by the way. Yeah. That, that's both of us. And, yeah. and I think one of the things I've realized is, you know, you do get everything that you dreamed of, but it doesn't come when you thought it was going to come. And not when you want it. Yeah. Yes. But it unfolds. And I think there's some, there's a beauty in that because you need to live the moment you're in now and leave something else for later. Yeah. Because otherwise you you have nothing to work for. You have nothing to live for. Yes. I remember saying this to somebody who I... He, he owned uh, a load of businesses and I was at university at the time and I was saying, I can help you with this, I can help you with that. And I was really keen. I was, I was just dying to get out of university and just earn some money. Start working. Yeah. I know. And he just said, he said, Paris, Paris, like, how old are you? I said, I'm 22. And he says, you're still at university, right? I said, yeah. He says, look, do that because you'll never get that time back. Be at <laughs> university and live it. And when you're my age... You can do what I do, and you will have that, and but let that come later. And you know, you didn't listen. I didn't listen. No, yeah, I did course. listen. No. I mean, it didn't make sense to me then. I know. But 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 now I get it, and and later I will uh, be a grandfather, and I'll be able to enjoy that. And you will say side, the same you know? thing, and they will not listen. Yeah. Yeah. But I'll have the wisdom that I'll actually yeah, know what yeah, I'm talking yeah, about yeah. by then. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, so I realized that life unfolds things at the at the time that you'll appreciate it. So you don't have to be in too much of a hurry and a rush. That, yeah. That's at least what I feel yeah. anyway. Um, okay, so the w one question I asked earlier, but I'll just re-ask it. People coming through the ranks, uh, you know, what advice would you give to your younger self or to someone um, following in your footsteps? Wanting to invent? Yeah, wanting to get into your field. Grades are not everything. Like, you don't have to be an A student. But also remember, this is the trap I fell in. I was thinking I don't need grades to apply patents. It's true. But you need grades to finish your master's and PhD to get more inventions. So watch out. You have to play both games. <laughs> because I heard some advices saying you need to be smart in life. You need to have the charisma. You need to have connections. And some other people, they are like, no, trust me, grades and finish your master's, PhD, and everyone will die to have you in the company. But today, when I look at it, it's actually a mix of both. This is the one advice I didn't hear. They were both right. I couldn't do that, just the mix. So if I have the chance to go back in time, I would study harder and get higher grades while applying for my patents and having that um, passion in innovating and trusting myself more than my professor. I could trust my, my ideas more than my professors, which is, was it, like, I, I, didn't, I, I don't know where did I get that confident, but it was good to have it. <laughs> so that's it. <laughs> Fantastic. That's a really nice touch. Rima Mazuki, thank you very thank much you. for joining the podcast. It's been a pleasure having you here, you an so inspiration. And I will be keeping my eye on what you do in the future because I'm yeah. sure it's going to be big. Thank you so much. And it was a pleasure to have me. Thank, thank you. you. And uh, join us next time and follow us on Rove Hotels on social media to leave your comments. <laughs>